Here's a nice integral involving the floor function. It's the integral from 0 to 1 of x times floor of 1 by x. And the structure here warrants a nice substitution, one of my favorites in fact. And the substitution I'm talking about is, wait, first we need to call the integral i as always for reference purposes. And the substitution I'm talking about is letting x equal 1 by u. Now this implies that dx equals negative 1 by u squared du. So this implies that i in the u world is the integral from where to where exactly? Well, we see that as we let x equal, wait, this is in my color palette, the usual one, here it is. If we let x equal 1 by u, then as x approaches 0 from the right, u will approach infinity. And by similar token, if we let x approach 1, then u will approach 1 as well. So we have the integral now from infinity to 1, which does seem kind of weird, but... Um, We'll fix that in just a second. And we have x here, which is 1 by u. And floor u times the uh, differential element, which in our case now is 1 by u squared du with a negative sign. And notice that if we switch up the limits of integration, we introduce another negative sign that cancels out the first one. So we have the integral from 1 to infinity of uh, floor u divided by u times u squared is just u cubed. So this is the structure of the integral in the u world. And now for some nice uh, manipulations of the structure using the properties of the floor integral. We can write the integral from 1 to infinity as the integral from 1 to 2 plus the integral from 2 to 3 plus the integral from 3 to 4 and on and on we go. So this implies that we can write the integral from 1 to infinity as the sum over the positive integers k of integrals from k to k plus 1. So this does something really nice to our structure. It implies that i equals the sum over k of the integrals from k to k plus 1 of floor u divided by u cubed du. And now it's time to make use of the properties of the floor function. So if you're integrating from k to k plus 1, then your variable u will lie between k and k plus 1. And because the floor function spits out the integer part of the real number that you plug into it, this inequality implies that floor u equals k. And this is a pretty neat result because it simplifies our work quite a bit. So all of this implies that your integral i equals the sum over the positive integers k of the integral from k to k plus 1 of floor u is just k now divided by u cubed du. And because the k variable here is a constant with respect to uh, the integration operator, we can actually slip it outside the integral sign and write this as the sum over k of k times the integral from k to k plus 1 of, oh, sorry about that, k plus 1 of u to the negative 3 du. And the integration here is pretty standard. We're going to get um, u to the negative 2 divided by negative 2 and the limits of integration are k and k plus 1 and you can actually get rid of this pesky negative sign if you flip the limits of integration. So the lower limit is now k plus 1 and the upper limit is k and this is just a constant factor of 1 by 2, right? So we can just write this outside the summation operator and we have one half of the sum over the positive integers k of k times 1 by u squared with the limits being k and k plus 1, right? So you get uh, 1 by k squared minus 1 by k plus 1 squared. Okay, neat. And once you multiply out the k, we get 1 half of the sum over k of 1 by k minus k divided by k plus 1 squared. And now for your casual integral solver's favorite trick. It's adding a zero, and the kind of zero you want to add here is plus one minus one.
And this gives you the sum, uh, this gives you one half of the sum over k of 1 by k minus uh, k plus 1 divided by k plus 1 squared, which of course is just the reciprocal of k plus 1. And using the linearity of the summation operator, we have negative 1 half of the sum over k of, now you have two negatives giving you a positive, right? So you have 1 by k plus 1 squared. Now the two sums you have here are pretty easy to evaluate. And the first one, if you replace k plus 1 by n, can be written as the sum over the integers greater than or equal to 2 of 1 by n squared. And of course you can write this as the sum over the positive integers n of 1 by n squared minus 1 by 1 squared, which is of course 1. And this here is the famous Basel problem, which is of course the Riemann zeta function evaluated at 2. So you have zeta 2 minus 1, and of course we cannot forget this uh, factor of 1 half. So the first of these sums evaluates to 1 half of zeta 2 minus 1. And this sum here is pretty nice. It's an example of a telescoping series. And if you have the sum over k from 1 to n of this structure here, that's 1 by k minus 1 by k plus 1. And if you expand it, then you get 1 by 1 minus 1 by 2 plus uh, 1 by 2 minus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4. And on and on we go, all the way up to 1 by n minus 1 by n plus 1. And you see all the terms in the middle here cancel out very nicely. So you're left with 1 minus 1 by n plus 1. And if you let n tend to infinity, then this here will approach 1. So this implies that the sum over the positive integers k of 1 by k minus 1 by k plus 1 equals 1, which is a pretty neat result. And all of these results, when combined, give you the result for our integral. So i equaled 1 half of this sum, right? So that's 1 half of 1, which is 1 half, plus the other summation result, that was 1 half of zeta 2 minus 1, so that's another 1 half here, but with a negative sign that cancels out with this one. So this is a pretty neat result. The integral here, your floor function integral, evaluated, evaluates out to 1 half of zeta 2. And zeta 2 is, of course, the beautiful result of pi squared by 6. So all of this implies that the integral from 0 to 1 of x times floor of 1 by x dx equals pi squared by 12, which is a very, very nice and pleasant surprise. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.